Welcome to the Picking Nerds, and it's time for another tier list. This one is Haymakers, baby. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us good at Picking Nerds, bringing you daily magic content as always. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is Patreon. And guess what? There's already a link in the description. It takes you everywhere you need to go. Yeah, you can support us directly with money. Or, if you don't want to give us money directly, you can take your money and buy magic cards through our TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Go there, buy the magic cards you were going to purchase anyway, and because you started with the link, guess what, Beezy? Money. Money. We get money. Money. But you spend no extra money. Right, right, uh, right. You can also spend money on Dragon Shields, the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. Yes, and they have an EU and a US link in our description. Pick either one, depending on where you live. Buy those sleeves, buy those play mats, buy those deck boxes, and guess what? Do you know? We get a kickback? No, money! Money, ah. money, money, money. <laughs> we have to do a tier list, and it's about some haymakers in the format. Now, a haymaker is, you know, it's like giant punch. You're putting a bunch of effort into it. So we kind of have these as like six mana plus big impactful spells and commander. And we're going to do a tier list, except we got We're too big. We're too big. We are. We are. It's not even close. Like, way too big. Like, I don't remember because we started a, we started about 100 size, like on uh, in Premiere Pro. And we shrink down, I think, to about 24. So we're like four times too big. Let's do it. All right. Let's shrink down. We are here with the signature exclusive Nipping Nerds tier list, which goes from S tier, which is the best, to poop tier, which is the actual worst. There's no F tier. It's poop tier. Yeah. Poop soup is what the kids are calling it nowadays. So let's hop right into it. We got our very first one, and it is Aminatu's Augury. These are in alphabetical order. That's how they tend to be for us. Aminatu's Augury is eight mana. You look at the top eight, eight cards, and you can get a land and one of each other type to cast. So you can literally hit perfectly in a ideal world. I've never seen it. It is technically possible. This is this is a hay, this is like the haymaker for haymakers. Right. You, you don't even you don't end with this. This isn't the start and the end. This plays every other card in this list. Exactly. Yeah. Your deck is going to play like seven or eight of these other ones and you're going to hope when you flip all of them that that's what you get. That's everything. And you're going to have really bad opening hands. <laughs> yep. I mean, I, whatever deck that is. Yeah. I mean, I have a deck, I have a Maelstrom under deck that might actually like this guy. I didn't even think about it, but with the whole deck is Haymakers. So I'm totally fine with playing this, but actually all the Haymakers are creatures. Eight cards so, is a lot. So that doesn't work. So let's just, I'm going to throw it in like C tier. It's perfect C tier. Yeah. I was thinking the exact same thing. It's nothing special, but it is a, it is like C is always going to be like your average passable Decent one, and I'm totally fine playing with in certain decks. Maybe the average is somewhere between B and C. And we're, it's about average. So let's go to Aurelia the Warrior. Six mana, three, four. First time she attacks, you get an extra combat. So if you you think, wow, they have a really crazy board state, and then they slam Aurelia, Aurelia you're dead. Yeah, Aurelia is actually just a really strong card, and the fact that she has haste is really what is getting her from okay cards to great cards. She will get you one extra combat every single time you play her, unless she gets spot removed immediately, but that is removal. Not a great argument. So I'm thinking better, so like a B, or do you want to put her in A? Um, This one's close. I think she's an A tier. I think this card is, the only thing that drags it down is it's a two color card, has a lot of color requirements, inner cost, does bring her down from definite like S tier, but I think this card is really, really good and genuinely just worth six mana. Just think about what an extra combat costs you. You're talking four, Five mana for extra combat. For a spell. For and a it's like, no, here's a 3-4. Here's a 3-4 that not only will do it this turn, but if it is not answered, we'll do it again next turn. This card is incredibly, incredibly strong, strong and sometimes often overlooked. And if it wasn't obvious, I don't know if we mentioned this, but we are talking about how strong these cards are in EDH, right? Like, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exa exactly what we're talking about. Like, Aurelia, like you were saying, like, you think it'd be... I was thinking S. I think she's down from S because of her restriction on she's, casting costs. She's also got some infinite combos. She's very, yeah, Helm of the Host, very, this, this card's just insane. Yeah, this card's good. Uh, Avenger of Zendikar is next. This is a classic. Classic, and it's a card that I always poop on because I just think it's just below par now. Nowadays, we got better stuff to do, but it's seven mana, and you make a bunch of plants, then you can put counters on them. I still think it's average. Um, I think... In the grand scheme of things, it's a C, just like an Aminatu's Augury, yeah. where you're, it does good things. And it is a very, it is an army in a can. This is one card, you get more bodies than almost any other card is going to give you, especially just for seven mana. And because of that, it's like, okay, this card is actually good, but you can do better, and usually you have to untap with this card. This is a, this is a, 
okay, this is a play it, pass, go kind of card because unless your deck has ways to give haste, and that's okay. But it's I, I think it's an overplayed card and often an overhyped card. I don't think it's good in the top deck mode. I don't think it's really that good in your opening hand. It's going to make things worse. I don't think it's very quick at closing out games. You know, it gives him time. Gives him time to go. Oh man, he said he was going to throw a punch at me. I should probably defend it. You know, not a huge fan, but C's probably fine. If if uh, yeah, C's fine. Let's go to Bullos of Citadel. Bullos of Citadel is insane. I don't see how this isn't an S. You can cast top card of your library for life, and it has combos. And you can pay ten life and just deal of 10 to everybody. Yeah. Or pay 10 permanents, deal 10. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, Bullets of Citadel is completely bonkers. I mean, it's not even close. This, this is like one of the best haymakers in the whole entire format. Every, t I, It's a groaner. Uh, every single time, like, I don't, I have no problem with anyone playing this card. I'm not mad when people play it, but when people play it, I go, crap, we need to answer that. Because if it lasts a turn, two turns, three turns, it just always pops off. You oh, It's almost always converts to a win at a rate higher than something like uh, like it won't be on here, but Marari's Wake, where it's like yeah. it's a big splashy permanent that you want to keep on tapping with. But like if you want to tap with Boss of Citadel, it feels super hard to lose unless you get super unlucky and you go land land like every other turn. Yeah, the non creature spells on this list, a lot of them, you know, the ones that are the most brutal is like the turn's not over yet. And it's like, I just started. Now you're going to deal with my whole rest of my turn, which is me putting spells into play, assembling threats, and then at the end of the day, but also Citadel is still the biggest threat, and I have five other things to play. Yeah, exactly. What do you want to answer? Exactly, because the turn it comes down, it just starts casting spells. If they don't have an instant speed answer, you're going to spend the rest of your turn just casting spells. Pretty good stuff. How about Consecrated Sphinx? What does that do? Consecrated Sphinx is six mana for a 4-6 flyer, and whenever an opponent draws a card, you can draw two cards. Well, how about that? Well, how about that? I have three opponents. Yep, this card is actually stupid, like, to the point of, like, why is this card here? It, it, it does it breach into uninteresting territory, but we're talking about power, so it's got to be S, right? Oh, it's absolutely S. This card is this card is not only can it go in a blue deck, it can go in any blue deck. Uh, it just it, it's an auto include if you're just looking for power almost overall until you hit CDH. It's like all the way up to your nines. I think you could put this in any blue deck, and then CDH is like oh you start cutting it because you're way more efficient than this card. Yeah, it's just uh, six mana is kind of a lot, and it's. Just a card that you don't you don't like need in any deck, but you could just put it in any deck because how bad could it possibly be for you? It's probably six mana draw two is the floor. I mean, it always ends up being it's six mana, and if it goes around once right. with no extra draws, that's six cards for six mana, and that's already power for like a, a instant sorcery type spell. And if you're blue, you're drawing ways to protect this thing. So let's go to Crater of Behemoth, another easy Windmill Slam S tier. It ends more games than almost any other card. I would... I would argue this possibly is number one for ending games in Commander. Um, it is a joke how little effort you need to put in to win the game with this card. Yeah, I think, so I would, if for Haymaker specifically, I'd put it at S. Like, if we're comparing cards, Boss Citadel's a better card than Creative Cream with, I right, believe. But like, we're doing Haymaker big things, like, the role of Haymaker is obviously Creative Cream If it's, I had to pick one card, it might be Creative Cream It's quintessential. It's the quintessential it's the blueprint the game ender like if you want to end the game in commander this is the card you go to because it's so easy it's it, like it is easy mode it's this is over I'm slamming it I have five creatures the game's over it's absolutely over because of how much damage this adds the game is slightly less over when you slam an Elishnorn but it feels pretty rough too Elishnorn's a must answer but it, like like you said it does end a lot less games I think this is an A tier I think below Aurelia I think it is All right. I think overall like Aurelia is a stronger magic card but Elishnorn, insane. I mean, I'm not trying to bash Elishnorn because I think Aurelia is better. She's no. an A. She's an A. She's an incredibly strong card. She wipes the floor with your opponent. It's, I, I, I always love the, if somebody has a 5-5 five five and you have a 1-1 one one with Elishnorn on the board, they those, trade. those are trading. That's, that's, a, that's a trade ski. That's crazy to think about because she does that for every creature. Right. Uh, she, she makes a four power difference for every single creature on the board. In your favor. Yeah, four power difference is huge, and that's that starts just to be the the numbers where you're like, oh, yeah, this is better than a lore, an anthem effect. Look, we don't need those. Yeah, exactly. We don't need plus one, plus one. Like, plus two, plus two is good. Right, it's but, not... like, no one's playing Dictate of Heliod, but it's like, well, what if I just paid two more mana and killed all their X2s? And then you would have an insane magic card that doubles as both removal and the wing con. Man, why, why are all the bangers right in front? I, maybe we'll just have a bunch of S-tiers, but Emrakul, the, the promised end... And to a lesser extent, the other four Eldrazi that you could play, Ulamogs and Kozleks. I think Emrakul is kind of the representative here because that card is just... <gasps> so I want to talk about Eldrazi overall because 
Let, let's I, if we, we we could put Emrakul just here, but let's put the Eldrazi because the Titans. I don't want to do I don't want to do all of them individually, and I think this is an easy A tier over A tier overall for them, where they're all very good, they're all very strong, and they but they are a lot of mana, right. so it's dragging them down a bit. If it was just Emrakul. Right. It's an easy S tier for me. I think Ulamog Infinite Gyro's dragging her down. I mean, I think like Kozilek, the Great Distortion with his... Hard to cast. With his annoying pips is also dragging it down. This card's great. Or these cards are all great. All, all the Titans are super awesome. They're great cards. You, If you have the decks that can cast them con, uh, consistently, they're some of the best options for colorless... Like, your your decks that... Like, your Rakdoses, that can reduce colorless mana costs. And you can get it way down. Animars. Obviously, these are your go-tos. Emrakul himself is an S because it reduces its own cost, like by himself with no other hoops. Like, oh, don't worry about it. You You're play, fine. Yeah. Wait, I played Magic. Okay, Emrakul costs eight mana now. Right. Yeah. Emrakul's sick. It just ends so many games. It's hilarious how many games Emrakul ends. And I, uh, I bonus points to first Kozlek, first Ulamog because there's decks that never even cast them that they're amazing in because they just want to shuffle their graveyard in. Yeah. I mean that is that is also a great power, like a little power boost to them. That yeah, they have, they're like a zero mana spell. It's like, hey, when you discard this, get a spell effect. When, when this card is discarded, or put, when this card is put in your graveyard, shuffle it, so it just becomes its own right, little Restart card. your deck loop again. And, yeah, there's not cards. The only They're like the only cards that do it, I think. Yeah, there's really not much like that. Yeah. Next is a Tali. It's a six mana, six, six. When you attack, you're jamming, and you get a top card of everybody's library for free. This card is so much cooler than it actually plays. Uh, this look, this is very top heavy. This list, like you said, uh, Atali is just going to be in C tier. Yeah, I, think I so. love this. Now let me be very clear. This is one of my favorite haymakers in the whole entire format. It's satisfying. I have eight decks, and I'm playing it in three. I mean, this is a card that I don't. I don't need an excuse. I need the littlest excuse to play it. Lelia, what? It triggers Lelia. I'm in. Maelstrom Wonder, I can give it haste. I'm in. It's uh, play my opponent's stuff deck. It plays my opponent's stuff. I'm in. It's just. You you give me an excuse. The littlest excuse I'm playing it, it's not that good. It is it is strong, it is swingy, it does demand answers. But for six mana, there's a lot better things usually you can do overall. Yes. Next, expropriate. Nine mm -hmm. mana, you get an extra turn, and you get a blatant thievery, you steal everybody's best thing, and then they have to sit around while you destroy them in the next turn. And if anyone gives you another extra turn, the game is over and you should all concede because there is no point playing it. I, I this is between S and A. I, I wanna kinda put it maybe low S. What do you think? Oh, I think it's an easy S. It's just it's just a very low effort win condition. Um, like so very low effort. I would put it above Consecrated Sphinx in the Haymaker category. Okay, yeah, uh, it's nice. And, and, ab and above both of Citadel. Like for a Haymaker, like for a Haymaker, Expropriate is insane. You this, dread it. You you're like if they have it in their deck, you're like, when are they going to play it? Something that's not on here and perhaps will be in part two if you guys want to see is like Time War or uh, Time Stretch. Also very insane. A extra turns are really, really strong. And when you combine it with the Blatant Thiever, which is a seven mana card, now you're getting, you're literally getting Time Walk. Yeah. So you're getting Time Walk, Blatant Thievery, and that is an insane, insane magic card. For less blue pips. For <laughs> for less blue pips. Just, I mean, Expropriate, I don't think is fun. And I've cut it from all my decks because my friends hate it. Uh, and I understand why. But God, is it good. Definitely my top 10 least favorite cards in Commander. I'll play against whatever. But I don't have to like whatever. Top 10 least favorites. If this was my least favorite tier, it would also be an S tier. Uh, fiery Emancipation. I was like trying to think of it because the art just kind of looks like fire, a mountain or something. But yeah, that a really, really weird artwork. Yeah. But it triples all your damage. So this card is, it's one of the cards that I think we, uh, when that set came out, we just a little overlooked it. Not a little. I'm not saying a lot. I think it's a B. I was going to uh, say B. I, I think it's a B. I think it's, it's not a bad card. But it's not this great, insane card. It has overperformed in my Maelstrom Wanderer deck, which isn't over the top snappy deck. It's just so much. I think that's where you want it. You don't want it when it's your top end. You want it when it's like one of many, because I don't want to be attacking with one ones when I have Fiery Emancipation. That's plus two, plus oh, play Rally the Peasants. I don't know. And we're like two twos. It's like, well, that's plus four. Okay. I kind of want like three threes or bigger. Yeah. Like, I, all over the place. I mean, it's also any. Any any red red commander with a seven uh, in that power slot, go for it. That's a one shot kill or repeated pinging. Also crazy. Also can be crazy. I it, it, this card is good. It's definitely as overperformed from what I expected. I put it in as like it's silly. It's over the top. It's it's killed people. What I really like about this card is that it is 
the best, not even close, of these effects we've seen. There's like one closer, actually, we're going to do it next. That The only one that's relatively close is next. This is probably still the best because it is six mana and it's an enchantment. Then you got Gisela, the creature who doubles your damage or their damage dealt to them and halves the damage dealt to you. Pretty annoying. This card is like consistently, you know, I don't think it's great. I, I really wouldn't play it much. But when I do see it, and as a haymaker, it's like, wow, that's a pretty big impact, especially if you got a tax that same turn. I think this card has shown me to be better than I ever thought it was. It's real good. It, it's a B. I mean, I think it's in the B tier. You got to kill it. You got it. Exactly. It's a must. I think if it's a must, it's a must answer. Like, if you, you cannot leave it on the board without the game ending, I think that that is at least a B tier for me. And unlike almost all of these cards, you can't really go for the, like, player removal is removal strategy because your damage is halved. It's like, oh, well, that's it. We got to get it. We got to get We got to get her. She just played Gisela. It's like, how? What are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. It, that, that's what's so crazy is that it has so much damage. You're rounding down, too, on all that damage. Mm-hmm. One damage coming at you? No, zero damage coming at you. Gisela is super annoying, but she's eight mana. She's seven mana. She's, she's worth seven mana. She's seven mana. She is very high costed. She has a lot of pips. But she's really, really good. Now, this is probably the best one on here. On this, We have this top-heavy list. We got Grave Titan. So this is a 6-mana six 6-6, six, right? But when you play it, you get two vanilla tokens. And you, there's more. When you attack, you also get Hold two on. crappy tokens. You idiot. You forgot the most important thing. It has Death Touch. <gasps> and so if it's a, not a zombie. If a 7-7 seven, seven attacks you. Right. You, Any other one of these better cards attacks you, you block, trade. Ex- got him. Whoa. Grave Titan's poop. Grave Titan uh, is garbage. It's the most. It is actually poop tier. I've come like we've come to the realization we're playing in that lower power attacks meta, and I don't ever want to play this card. I'm still not interested. It doesn't feel like a good card to me at all. Um, it's six mana. This is not a six mana card. Mate, the only way uh, the, errata it to be a zombie wizard, and then we'll talk. Then I will actually be interested. Mate, Show me the four mana four four Grave Titan that's a zombie and still just has the same text. Yeah, I would take that. That one, well, that's an, that's an insane card. That's a much better card. I mean, that's no, that's. I think that well, the thing you just described is a bonkers. It's least. Eight power for four mana. Eight power. It's eight power for four mana. You get more on attacks. Let's say maybe that that card makes one, and that card might be a D. So like, I just Grave Titan is so not where you want to be. It's literally a meme of the channel that we just take this card, and we're so much lower on it than we used to be because we're in the combat meta and we're going. All right, now how do I take advantage of you know combat's the most important thing? How do I Circum circumvent the attacks and blocks and just try to kill them and it's like well it's not great Titan it's not that that's not how you do it uh, what do you think uh, I'm interested where do you think the next one is Inferno Titan I love six mana Inferno Titan so much six mana enters the battlefield deal three divided as you choose and when the attacks do the same it also has fire breathing first of all I would so much rather remove three power than create four crappy power versus uh, uh, on the battlefield or remove three toughness this thing can go face this thing with haste is really really sick I think it's better than Grave Titan even with haste. I don't think it's, like, super crazy. I know I love this card. I'd probably put in, like, a D. Big, perfect. Uh, exactly what I was thinking. It's a D. This is a card that I like, but I don't think is very good. I think it's one. It's it's on the lower end of Haymakers. You know, I'm generally avoiding it. I think it's a great budget card yeah. because it is so cheap. But other than budget, I'm, I just kind of want to avoid it most of, the, most of the time. But it does do well in its role. Yeah. Let's go to a It That Betrays. It's a 12-mana 11-11 with Annihilator 2. And if they ever sacrifice anything, like with Annihilator, you get the permanence that they sacrifice. This card is so overcosted, so expensive, that it's just like not a card I'd ever play. But as a haymaker, I'm scared of it. You can't just ignore it and play the game. You'll lose. Yeah. I mean, this card is it, it's, it's down in the D tier, I think. It's yeah. not... It's super overcosted and it doesn't quite give you enough. It's it's a card I like. I think it's really cool and it has homes. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, all the like, I'm cool. The promise then, infinite gyre, uh, butcher ceaseless, of truth, butcher of truth, ceaseless hunger are all going in the decks that can cast them. That's four, 11, 10, 11 mana spells in your deck before this, and how many you're really playing. Now, yeah, a little cheaper than those, but still not the cheapest card. A little, I guess. It's more expensive than Ulamog. Is it? Well, is that more? Ex- well, oh, you meant mana cost. Yeah. I, I, I sorry. I went. I was going oh, to budget wise. I had moved to budget. Uh, yeah. All the the titans are insanely overcosted in pro, in like money. Uh, but this one is like twelve dollars, which is a lot cheaper. So less, I, less of a cool tax. Uh, less of a cool tax. Though I think this card is super cool still. Well, you think Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh is even cooler? He plus ones. 
basically every time to just mind rot everybody. Or you can cast a spell from someone's deck for free. Or you can deal seven to something and you're probably not ultimating him. But if you do, it's bad for one person. I thought this coach is good. Uh, the, the second mode, the plus one, is like the really annoying, like, you're going to lose the game part. Like he he has the, the coolest thing is he has two pluses too so he does his eat hands and then after he eats your hands he's like alright I'm done eating hands I'm going to start taking cards off everyone's deck and just start casting them for free and the card is just it's actually good I'm so, like on an empty board he can actually it actually protects itself in a weird way you know if you're in the later game you slam it and it's like okay everybody lose two cards and then they're going to then they're going to play threats to answer him then you plus again they lose the rest of their hand and then you can defend it. Yeah, I have to actively play fun mode with him. Uh, I when I it's so miserable the stupid mind rot. Well, it's yeah, it's it's not fun. And I like I I am in I am in the win, but I'm in but when I'm playing my steal your stuff deck. The goal is to play your stuff, so I'm gonna use the other mode usually with it. This is a B. Uh, I think this card overperforms, is overperformed and showed me enough that I'm like, all right, that is it's actually a good card. This is. When you cast it for seven mana, as long as you have some creatures on board, some board state, and you can protect it, it's a good magic. Card. A planeswalker worth its mana cost? What? A planeswalker worth seven mana. That that says a lot about this card. Totally does. Let's go to Omniscience, aka Omniscience, another Bolas Citadel type card where you, they play it and you go, oh crap! But the turn's not even close to over, and in fact, it's probably too late. Um, Omniscience is pretty much is one of those cards that when you play it in your deck. You should just win on the turn. You play it almost every single time. All it takes is a little card draw. You get going, and it's over. You just you spiral through your deck. You draw your all your cards, and you win with a ham sandwich. Which I am sh uh, in our April Fools' video. I was shocked that they didn't want to ban ham sandwich. It combos with everything. Yeah, ham sandwich is one of the biggest offenders in the entire format. <laughs> I know we would have banned it if it was our April Fools' video. But I think I mentioned this one an A top of A. It's is it S tier? I mean, it's ten mana, but it ends it ends games better than El Durazi. It does, but it's also pretty. It's not consistent. You have to have a full grip, pretty much. It. it I mean, you can't end with you can't end with an omniscience. It's not the last thing you can do. You kind of, but also like you can't end with an omniscience. But all you need is one draw spell, and it usually goes off from there. Even a even a preordain. I, I feels love, like it's getting you there. You're just trying to get me to say S because you mentioned preordain. I mean, that's I what love, I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you go omniscience in the preordain, it feels like you're probably going to get there most likely. You're not going to convince me. I'm going to stick it on top of A. That's fair. Preordain can't sway me this time. Primal Surge, flip the top card of your deck for eight mana. If it's a permanent, it goes into play. Well, guess what? If your deck's all permanents, which we can do, your entire deck goes into play. And usually what you do, I think, is play one spell so that you can't deck yourself. Where's you? Where are you on this one? I want to hear what you think. I think this card's insane. I think that it doesn't end a lot of games in Commander because people choose not to play it because it gets a little stale, going, there's a nuclear bomb in my deck, and if I ever draw it and play it, you lose the game. Because you are dead. Okay, I think one downside about this card and is it is a huge deck-building restriction. It can I, be, I, it's big. I don't know how crazy it is. It's, I mean, it's big. It, you lose removal, mostly, a fair bit. You you lose removal. That, I mean, that's a, that's a lot. It's already it's like a you lot. Lose, you don't lose all your removal. You lose, like, access to instant speed removal in some cases. And a lot of creature removal. If you're not in black, uh, there's it's, you don't really have that much creature removal um, overall. I mean, this is a, that's all fine and dandy. It's a big restriction. It, it definitely is, but in the decks that play it, it is the ender. I think it's like a... Honestly, in my head, it's a C. And even in green decks, though, you still get uh, Song of the Dryads. You still get Kenneth Transformation. You get a... Yeah, that's true. Like you have creature removal. You do have some. I mean, I'm on C. That's where I'm at with this. I, I don't think this... Looks like we have our job to bottom a B, then, because I'd put this thing in, like, A tier. Oh, yeah. I think this is a card people actively avoid. Um, Cause yeah. Because it's, it's like, yeah, I did the thing a lot, and now I'm done doing the thing. I also, it doesn't make for exciting deck building, like you said. Well, no, but it's still a ridiculous haymaker. It's like, here's my deck for for eight. I think it's ten mana. Maybe it's not eight. Ten mana. It is ten. It is definitely ten mana. But whatever. I mean, I'm I'm not high in this card because maybe maybe it is the boring fact that it's playing into it for me. Right. It's like with all the rest of them, you know, Crater Hoof. I'm obviously playing a creature deck. I'm obviously going wide. You know, like that's but you don't even well, like a lot of these cards don't require almost not a lot for you like. Play creatures is like Aurelia, Elishnorn, and uh, Critter for say play creatures. You could still, even if you played this without building around it, you, know, you got like you're in a low spell deck, you got like ten instant or sorceries, and this thing's just gonna flip into like ten spells. Yeah, but the problem with that is uh, the time you can't afford to ever have the ten mana get 
two permanent. Well, that's why nobody ever does that. <laughs> it's always just my whole deck. Let's go to Protein Hulk. This is, I mean, this is, if this is an S tier, I don't know what it is. It's six, seven mana, six, six. When it dies, you win the game. You go find Karmic Guide Visitors here, or you go find some other loop that just destroys everybody. Uh, this is his ass, right? Yeah. Game's I'm, over. Yeah, it's a game ender. Is it better than Crater Hoof? It's less it's, iconic. Maybe no, put it here. Yeah, I would put it, I would put it there, yeah. It's fine. Like, the thing is, this one, uh, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel like a haymaker because... It's basically a sorcery. Because it's basically a sorcery that wins you the game with a sack outlet. And it's like, that's so boring. Instead of like, whoa, oh my god, how are we going to beat that? It's like, whoa, oh my, oh, next game? Yeah, exactly. There's it's, no time to even this one be is, scared of it. This one's boring. I hate I hate Protein Oak. I think it's one of the most boring cards in the format. Not but sure why it's here. Obviously very strong, but super. But like, <sighs> snore, snooze fast. It's up there with Omniscience. Where like, if, you, if you even see it at all, it's too late probably. Snooze fast. You probably should have already won. And it's just like, that's, those cards are kind of lame. Same with Expropriate. Rampaging Bale also. Another 6-6 six, six, six with other words on it. Landfall, you get a 4-4. Four, four. How do we feel about this? It's, it, I feel like... Inferno Titan territory, like a D? It, yeah, it's, so it's interesting. I'll even give you this. How about that? I don't even, I'll, I'll even give you this. I don't, whatever. It's not that important to me. Oh, uh, well, then. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of, I think it's trending to our poop tier for me, where it's like, it's oh. not It's not very good. Um, You really have to be a landfall deck. Like, like That's a prerequisite. A prerequisite. We're not even questioning to, any other deck where it's in. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't think you can play this anywhere else in the deck where you can get two right away. You have to be able to get two right away. And then you talk about interesting care because it is providing that those are good numbers now. Fourteen for six. Fourteen for six. You're going over three bodies. You're actually getting something. I don't like getting ten for, uh, ten for six. I don't. That clearly, we just talked about grave Titan being trash. Exactly. Um. And yeah, if you can keep hitting two lands of every turn, this actually can present threats. But it's slow. It's wait till I untap territory. Just you wait. And it, it's not. It, I I don't think this card is bad, but I don't think it's good either. Right. It's just like I'm. You can play it if you want. It's great on a budget. Great on a budget. Another great budget card, just like Infernal Titan. This one feels close to Primal Surge to me. It's Rise of the Dark Realms. You get all creatures from all graveyards. It's not always a haymaker, slam dunk, win the game. You can't really control whether it is or not. But people play this card, and it is huge and splashy, and it is good when it. When it's in the later game. So what I like about Rise of the Dark Realms over uh, something like a Primal Search, this is not a build around at all. You really don't have to. I mean, it can if you want one Haymaker in a black deck, you can just throw this in and say, okay, the game progresses to a point where the graveyard fills up. I can win with this card. Yes. It doesn't require building around at all. I think it's in a bottom of A tier. Where wow, really? I, the card's really good. Looks like, like, look, it looks like it's top of B tier then. <laughs> Just based on where I'd stick it. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm high on the card. I think this card is really good. It is nine mana. It's a lot. And it is a gum up your opening hand type of card. Where Oof, it, yeah. gets, it gets nine, but a lot. Most of these cards really are. But Rise of the Dark Realms it ends more games than I ever think it will. Like I I took my basically the one game which was hilarious. Uh, I was a Muxus deck. It, Muxus was cast like three times. There was a ton of goblins that got wiped like both all the times. And then I. Took all the goblins. Like I'd kill everyone with a goblin. Like, all in haste. An army of goblins. It was you just you got four payoffs for goblins yeah. and a bunch of tokens, and you just killed everybody. It was so funny. Like and it's this this card just ends games enough that I I would put it in A tier, but yeah, I understand B tier. It's like the only card on this list that you can't ramp out effectively. You it's it's not even nine mana. It's like nine mana and you can't accelerate into it because there's no point because you just won't get anything. It's like. Playing Mana Rocks and then playing Avengers Endicar in turn three, it's like, okay, you get two plants? Yeah, <laughs> like, I can agree with really that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a so good point. So slow. It's about this card. Is, this is a, an inevitability thing where if the game drags, I have one of these uh, cards that says, I can do, I'm going to be, I, I'm a threat. I think that's why it's such a sweet spot for like people people who want to play it. Like the playability of it is because it's not, I went out of nowhere. It's, we're in the late game, and I'm going to win the late game. It only wins the late game. It never wins the turn three. It never wins turn five. Yeah, exactly. It, that's that's a great point. I really do like this character. Top of B is actually probably a perfect place for Ooh, it. Ooh, how about win out of nowhere, freebies, game's over, should have killed me before I resolve this spell. Tooth and nail, go find two creatures and just put them into play if you pay nine mana. They easy S tier. I mean, you know how this... many two-card two, cre two creature combos there are? There's like hundreds. So we want to put it like right below Hulkster. I think there's like... 20 but you know hundreds good if enough. you want to count the replacements there's like hundreds oh yeah if you want to if you want to if you want to go kiki jiki and all of its replacements right, sure like, there's hundreds right uh but yeah I what's mean, there to say i mean this is lame let's just talk about something cool i mean that's completely fair it's get two creatures win the game you have to actively the only way it's not, it's not two creature win the game is if they don't have haste and you don't have 
Good, you don't have good creatures to get. I don't know if you're not if you're not playing cards to win the game with this. I would just recommend cutting it. I have it in my I have it in my deck, but that's it, a that's like a haymaker deck though. The whole point is like I want to resolve haymakers, it, not like and it'll still win the game a lot of times because if I have Melster Wanderer out, I can just get uh, Hoof Avenger. Well, I in my deck I don't have Hoof, but I get Avenger and Ibex. And I back. It's yeah. like that's gonna end the game. Most that's of the time. gonna do it. Uh, True Conviction is a card I fall in love with in the lower power metas where you actually care about combat and your life total. Double Strike Lifelink is is quite a drug. It's very fun to attack when you have Double Strike Lifelink. I think this one fits right next to Fire Emancipation. Yeah, like really, like, like the white version. It is pretty much like they they work so well and like it kind of is triple. It's about as swingy because you're getting the life back. Yeah, so instead of instead of dealing triple damage, you deal double damage. Oh, you know what? It's basically just Sella. And you gain life. It's just Sella on an enchantment, but you gain life because the damage they do is kind of halved because the you're doing your life, you're gaining and you're dealing it. It's, it's more, harder to kill you. It's way easier compared to Fire Emancipation. I think it's both. It's like a combination. It's, just, can, it's so easy to kill. You know what? It's just like the White Rise of the Dark Realms. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're right. Why didn't I think of that? Triple pips is really what we're talking about. That's what about. it is. I think that card only has double pips, but, you know. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good card. What about the can, next one? But you got to be in a combat. you got to be in a combat meta, yeah, and I'm, it's really good. Yeah, I'm very much a combat card. Let's go to Villainous Wealth. It's not, eight man, it's not six mana plus, but... If it's not six mana plus, please don't cast this card. You're stealing cards from their deck. The plan with this most of the time is to steal their entire deck. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, poop. I think this card stinks. <laughs> uh, I love this card. Fun, but, but bad. One of my favorite, probably one of my favorite haymakers that I don't have a po- spot to play currently, but it is so cool. Uh, this is a card that, it's an X spell that I feel like I can never cast it for enough. And it's, right. like even when I cast it for like twelve, it doesn't feel like it hits enough. Interestingly enough, yeah, I mean, I mean, thirty-five, forty percent of that's going to be lands, so you're really only hitting like seven, eight. How many of those are spells you care about? Two. I mean, yeah. You're not playing the same deck as them. So say it. I really love the card too. It's just a cool card. If I knew that every one of these other cards was at the table, I would start packing villainous wealths. <laughs> that's true. That is true. You can really, if you're going to hit consistently, hit these haymakers. I'm in. Uh, Void winner. Your opponents can't even. Ha ha. Ha! Huh, funniest joke ever. Please keep making it. This one, I, I honestly think it's a C. I think it's hmm, fine. It is passable, and it is annoying as hell. Mm-hmm. But it's not that good. It's not the end-all, be-all. Look at these other cards. I mean, yeah, exactly. That, I think that's what makes this card not that good. Look at this list. Again, I remind you, just like when we were talking about It That Betrays, where it's just, this is super overcosted. It costs a million mana I can get Emrakul. I can get Kozilek. I can get Ulamog at these prices. And these prices. <laughs> and yeah, when I'm spending this much mana, mm-hmm. I can get these cards. Why am I going to get something worse? It has an immediate impact, but it's not as big as some of the other cards. Almost any other card on here. It's like, well, half your creatures can't block. I'm like, oh, no. You can't cast half your spells, maybe. A lot of the... Removal is like not even costed in a way that favors Void Winnower because we're really big on one mana things. And some of the things that you can cast for free don't even matter that they're odd and they cost a lot. It's just not a card I like. It, it, it Sometimes it's annoying, but it doesn't justify putting it in my decks most of the time. Yeah, I think it's, it just sits in that T tier where it's okay. It's way overplayed, though. Is Then we got Warp World. It's the final one. Warp World and Great Aurora are going to mix up everyone's permanence. It's a board wipe. And then... Equal to your permanence, which you want a bunch of chaff, you want clues, you want blood, you want crap out, tokens, extra lands, field of the dead. You get to flip that many cards from top of your deck until you hit stuff, and then you're going to win from there. It's kind of like an I win. Uh, I, like a primal surge, like, I'm game pretty, over. I'm pretty low on this card. It requires an a extremely specific deck. And I think you, it goes here. Yeah, I, I agree. It goes in D tier. It, it, you need to be playing an extremely, extremely, extremely specific deck in that. And only then is this card okay. <laughs> this is like, I think this can be, you know, this or Great Aurora can be your one spell in addition to Primal Surge. Like, that's where it is. You just, so many permanents, all this stuff, you're aggressively digging through your deck to find this because it's so important because your deck is now a lot weaker. Unlike, I think it's, your deck is weaker when you're going all in on Warp World than it is on Primal Surge. Yeah, and that's completely fair. I'm just not. I, I'm really low on this character. This is the character. I. It's. It's just like Primal Search. It's such a big build around. I would never do it. I do think Great Aurora is better though. You think? Great? I think that's more of like an actual castable card. Maybe it serves more like a board wipe because it clears the board. You gotta get. You basically get an extra turn. 
Like if it's it's like wipe the board, you get an extra turn. All right, and that's fair. Uh, but we have to get bigger because we are way just like not way sized too, correctly. Yeah, we can't do shout outs without being sized correctly. As so, I flip the computer in front of the screen. So let's go ahead and grow. Ready? And we're bigger again. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons. Love you as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Go check out the links in the description because they Which are ones? Which ones, BZ? Personally for you. I, you listening, I've designed them for you. TCG Player, where you buy the cards you were going to buy already, except we get a kickback and you spend no extra money. And Dragon Shield, the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. You can buy awesome, amazing products straight from the source and still support us at the same time. Yeah, and all that is very much appreciated. And we got to dedicate this video to someone with a shout out. So this video, the patron who gets their name here at the end of this is, I want to say it's E-A-U-X. But if you go with how Bo is Bo, it'd be Ox. Ooh, it could also just be uh, Uno be Ox. Uh, <laughs> you start choking in the middle of it. Yeah, but this video is well. You get your little. This segment. is your. This, this is your is, segment. You'll get the segment at the end of the video. You paid for this. Well, you you get the roughest cut of us saying this ever recorded. Woo! What's the tidbit about our lives? Tidbit about our lives. I am officially. Very single. Wow. Join the club. Very, yeah, I am to the point of like, I am actually like, feel like I'm, I, 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 nothing, no negative words towards my ex at all. I'm not trying to obviously drag the name to the mud, but I feel like I've washed my hands of my ex at this point where I'm kind of just like, I'm moving forward They're with clean hands. I'm moving forward without my ex. He's a, nothing but nice things to say about him, but it's, it's time for me to finally move forward. So if, if you're cute and gay, if and at least 22 years old, right? hit me up. If you're cute and gay, <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, am I, if you're cute and gay and you like beards. Oh, I got one of those. You like Super Mario Walmart shirts? If you're uh, cute, if you're cute, straight, uh, uh, and you like tall people. Oh, I got that's, someone, that's, that's me. I got someone for, I got this guy for I was going to say, what are your three best qualities for your date ability right now. Go. My date ability? Three best ones. You have five seconds. Uh, really caring. Uh, uh, yep. Time's up, but keep going. Uh, pretty smart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Not quick-witted. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> uh, I'm really yeah, I'm really good at thinking of things off the top of my head really oh, quick. Oh, he's so good on improv. Uh, my improv is mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> Peace out, Tribe Scouts.